following presentation will help you gain a better understanding of how value-added and direct marketing can work for you on your small farm. The information presented here was generated through a collaboration of farmers, chefs, educators, and agribusiness leaders who are interested in using value-added and direct marketing techniques to enhance the demand for local food products. Profit from adding value to the crops they already grow, direct market these value-added products in their communities, develop value-added products that can be offered in local restaurants. By offering a diverse selection of specialty crops and value-added products, farmers could significantly increase their income, which would recycle back into the local economy. Food prices may be on the increase, but in the past 30 years, the share of the food dollar used on processing and marketing has increased by 180 percent, so the portion left to pay for actual food production keeps getting smaller. In fact, the farmer's share is about 20 cents on the dollar, a drop from 24 cents on the dollar in 1997. In 2002, farmers earned their lowest net cash income since the 1940s. This strategy can turn an unprofitable small farm into a thriving operation by creatively adding value to existing raw crops. As an alternative, small farms can add value by creating a new product. Not all these products need to be recipes and processed in a plant. Sometimes even with very limited processing, like husking sweet corn. When a farmer sells an ear corn to the consumer, uh, this is going to run, a dozen of these are going to run about three to four dollars a dozen, right? How does that farmer value add it even farther than that? He's got a pickup truck with a bunch of corn. Well, you get some lady that comes in and has really nice French nails and a big, big ring on and stuff like that. If the farmer says, look, I'll shuck it for you for an extra dollar, he'll take all 12 ears and while he's sitting there talking to the customer and go ahead and shucking it, that becomes a value add. Value added. Additional processing and servicing can make raw crops more desirable to consumers. I took the apples, coated them in chocolate, put some nuts on the bottom of them, okay? And I can get three, four, five, six dollars out of that apple, depending on where I sell it at. I don't like putting a stick in these until they're ready to go out the door, and preferably not. I like to sell them in a container like this. I can get about twelve dollars out of that, twelve, fifteen dollars out of that container. I can crank these out all day. What I'm going to do is take this apple, Cut it into three wedges, like this. Grab myself some little sticks. Jab a stick into the back of your apple. Get you a side towel and take off that extra moisture. You're gonna mess up your chocolate big time. Check this out. You just do this. Put a little theatrix into it if you have to. You know, when you're doing this in front of people, last week at Virginia Tech, Chef Jason Barger sat there and did this. And the college chicks just loved him. <laughs> he was sitting there, and he, he was cutting the pinky out like this, and he was doing a little bit of doing Oh, he was having a ball with it. You do that, you stick it in a pumpkin, because that's a good place to put it. We, we work with a pumpkin patch down in Winchester, Virginia. Pumpkins was the best thing in the world to do that. If I'm working at a place that has honeydew melons or something, I'll use those. Obvious examples of value added that includes processing and packaging. Fruits into preserves and butters pickled vegetables of all sorts. Agricultural tourism, another value-added strategy, involves events like allowing consumers to pick fruit, feed animals, plant seeds and crops, hay wagon rides, and sample products grown on the farm. Direct marketing is a technique where small farms can increase their income by selling directly to customers, including local restaurants. Direct marketing can include the following strategies. Farmers markets, on-farm retail, pick your own, direct delivery. Direct marketing offers several benefits. Consumers interested in safe and healthy food know exactly where their products come from. Consumers and chefs want fresh foods at the peak of freshness and flavor, which differs from supermarket produce that has been shipped long distances. Local farmers find a niche in direct marketing. Consumers increasingly demand local food, not just for fresh tasting produce, but because they want to know where their food came from. The quality, taste, freshness, and viability of foods are greatly affected by where the food was produced, how many hands the food passed through, how far the food was transported before arriving on the consumer's table. 
I've got several chef friends of mine who wants potatoes the size of a marble. That's what he wants. And I've talked to all my potato farmers and said, hey guys, we want potatoes as big as a marble. And we don't grow them like that. Most farmers in years past would, and, and still to this day, I know a few commercial potato farmers, that as they're digging through their potato fields, they throw these out. They think everybody wants a potato that big. But there's a whole bunch of potatoes that big left in the field. What do you do with them? <laughs> I'd go make friends with the farmer and say, hey, can I pick those up? Because for this, which is just not quite two pounds, about a pound and a half, you get $3.79 for them. And all I have to do is plant my potatoes too close together. Well, guess what? If you put these potatoes six inches apart and you grow them right on top of each other, which you get more per acre anyhow because you're closer, right? And when they start growing, you find a way there's a, a simple, it's a natural acid, but you spray on top of it that keeps them kind of runted a little bit. Boom, you go in there and you can harvest acres and acres of these type of things. And it works well. Here are some key questions to consider when developing a direct marketing strategy. A roadside stand versus a farmer's market versus a grocery store versus a restaurant. Which is best for your product? Which one would maximize profits for your value-added goods? This is called squirrel corn, all right? There's about 58 pounds to a bushel of corn, all right? This weighs a pound and a half. This guy gets a dollar for it. So if it was a dollar, let's just call it a, a dollar a pound, roughly, what's he getting out of that bushel of corn? He's getting $58 a bushel just by putting three ears in a cheap plastic bag and calling it squirrel corn. Would any local restaurants or supermarkets be willing to buy what you grow and harvest? What about your value-added products? Is there a value-added product that fills a niche in the local market? Can you produce it with your resources? There's a young man that I know, his name is Dylan Fuller. Dylan Fuller grows my peppers. He's actually in the 10th grade. This year he made over $2,500 from me on less than an acre growing nothing but jalapeno peppers. That's more money than his grandfather makes on acres and acres of potatoes. Because his potatoes are, are cheap, they're a commodity item, right? See what local retailers currently sell or would like to sell. Talk with customers, retailers, distributors, and restaurants to find out what is in demand. A friend of mine, John Cancellarich, who was up in Maine. John was working with the Maine Potato Board. He was actually working for Simplot, and he was making French fries. He was the, the research scientist on French fries. A, a young startup company came to the Simplot and said, Hey, look, we want little potatoes like these cut like this. And we don't want any oil put on them, we want them roasted, and then we want them frozen. Can you do that? Simplot says, no, we make french fries. Okay, this applies to big business as well as farmers, okay? John saw some vision in this, so he goes to his bosses and he says, hey, can I do this project? So he went around to some of his farmers and he talked to them, and he says, look, I want, to, I want you guys to grow me little potatoes. The farmer says, oh, no, we make taters like that. But Billy Clapham and John Cancellarich talked six farmers into growing them baby potatoes. Well, they got that part done. John went down to his local in Presque Isle, Maine, went down to the local Pizza Hut, and his wife, Johnny, cut them up like this at her house. John went down off hours at Pizza Hut and run them through the impinger oven, okay? Cooled them down, brought them back, Johnny bagged them up, and they sent them off to this company. Well, this company liked it, and they said, okay, that's great. Can you send us up 500 pounds? Sent 5 pounds, and 500 pounds, and 5,000 pounds, and then 10,000 pounds. Then he had to build a factory. So he and three of his buddies built a factory. Five years later, when Lean Cuisine was nationwide and hitting everything, John sold his portion of the company for $42 million. And those farmers now know how to grow and will grow these type of things. You can establish long-term business and personal relationships with local high-end restaurant chefs. Even though you may supply only small quantities, your value-added products will generate more money in a restaurant and raise the visibility of your brand. First, find a high-end restaurant chef interested in your value-added products. A fast food restaurant will not be interested. Second, review potential restaurants' menus to see if they might be a potential market for your value-added product. Now, how do you find out about that kind of thing? You go talk to the chefs. You look, read industry publications. What do you need? 
What can I grow for you? Not like I grow zucchinis that big and proud of it, okay? But what can I grow for you? Offer the chef samples of your value-added goods. Chefs and patrons like to see and taste food for themselves. Take a basket of value-added samples from your farm with you when visiting a restaurant for the first time. Farmers who use direct marketing can have a distinct advantage by building long-term customer relationships. High-end restaurants are increasingly interested in value-added products from local farms, particularly when the restaurants can relate a unique story about a product to its patrons. Give your product a unique brand by connecting it with an old family recipe or other local traditions. One of the things we did last year through the Collaborative for 21st Century Appalachia is that we have a group of chefs and farmers that are meeting and we have a meeting at a restaurant or some, some location somewhere and the farmers come in and they tell us what they grow and we tell them why we want it, when we want it, and how we want it. The farmers that you'll meet on today's farms are introverts. They don't like talking to people. They like driving their tractor, they like smelling diesel fuel, but they do not like talking to people, right? That's not what they do. But only like 40% or 50% of the farmer's wives are, introver are introverts. So that means we've got about 40-45% of the farmer's wives who are extroverts who can actually go out and talk to people. Well that's who showed up at this meeting. They finally started telling us about their corn. It's called Bloody Butcher. Bloody Butcher has been in their family for over seven generations. She tells us a story about her great 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 eight seven generations ago, grandmother, niece or whatever. My great 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 grandmother, Betsy Gibson, was kidnapped by the Native Americans and they took her to their camp and they kept her there for two three years she was a young girl they gave her a pouch of corn because that's what the young the young women did they went out and planted the corn and they carried it in a pouch as a, a symbol of fertility well she escaped with the pouch of corn that's how it got into the Meadows family it's helped them through the depression it's helped them through many hard times in their lives and Mr. Meadows really likes the idea of them continuing to grow this corn because it symbolizes more than just, you know, an agricultural crop. It's part of their family and what they do. And Tim Urbanic at Cafe Semino says, wow, that would make a great polenta. Nobody knew what the polenta was. None of the farmers in the room knew what a polenta was. We explained it to them, basically said it's just Italian grits. And they're like, oh, okay, well, that's interesting. Then Francis comes to me and says, well, you know, we don't know how. Uh, we don't have a grist mill. Don't know anybody's got a grist mill. And I said, well, I know a friend, a friend of mine that has a grist mill. So through networking, knowing different people, that's how we made this work. It's not what I know, it's the people that I know that make this possible. Because if you're just a farmer, you have to concentrate on your fields. You know, you don't have all the advertising and the marketing co connections because if you're out here obviously hoeing all day in the field, you're not going to have time to go out and make all these other. And that's the main important part of having the collaborative and having them up and running for us, the farmers of West Virginia. And sharing your resources amongst the chefs and the farmers and the community, ex the county extension agents, the colleges, the universities, you guys, this is how we make this happen here. And he said, take it to Jackson's Meal. He said, they've got a wonderful setup there. And he said, I'm sure that it would intensify the flavors. And we ended up getting this polenta mix or this cornmeal, rough cornmeal is what it is, and we called it Bloody Butcher Polenta Mix. Uh, meanwhile, I called Chef Hawkins. Chef Hawkins was going to have a Culinary Classic Weekend at Stonewall Resort. Chef Mingle from the Greenbrier Resort was actually going to be making a uh, Borson Polenta. To... I asked Dale, I said, can he use this, this polenta mix? And he goes, well, sure, he has to, he's going to be using whatever I buy. I'm like, that's great. How much is it? And it's thought in my head, most polenta mix is going to be a dollar a pound. This is a little bit unique. They've put a lot of effort into it. I said, Dale, how about $3 a pound? He's like, okay, sure, that'll work. So at $3 a pound, I turn around, and we just sold 30 pounds to Chef Hawkins. The two sisters are standing in my kitchen where we're coming up with the packaging and the label and everything. They have tears streaming down their face, and they're like, my God, we've been trying to do this for like 10 years. It was a good thing just to have that type of, uh, of a friendship being built there. And once we got involved with you guys, it's only taken like less than a month and we're in business. And we made our first sale. Advertise by putting up signs and offer promotions. Offer free samples of your value-added product to consumers. 
Display your products in an attractive manner. Consumers buy with their eyes, so use catchy themes and pay attention to color, light, and height in your product packaging. Emphasize that the products are local, fresh, and safe. It has crust mix already made up. Tells you how. All they have to do is add a little bit of uh, Crisco, a little shortening to that, and some water. The cinnamon fried apples are in there. I'm committed to West Virginia and to Appalachia, so we use a Homer Laughlin China Fiesta Ware. This is about a $22 gift pack. Well, box is a dollar. This is five dollars. It's six bucks, right? This cost me a whole whopping maybe 50 cents, okay? And this is about a dollar, dollar and a half worth of apples. Do the math. Roadside sales. This form of direct marketing lets you establish your own personal farmer's market with a ready supply of potential customers. Benefits. You can choose a location that best suits your customer base. Roadside sales offer limited transportation costs. You can accurately estimate the quantity of products needed as your customer base grows. Key considerations. Effective roadside marketing requires attractive displays with clearly readable signage. Exceptional service and a variety of different products will build your customer base. Green beans. Buy a whole bag of green beans, right? What do you pay? Two dollars, five dollars, something like that. Probably about two fifty for. I've seen a whole grocery bag of green beans at a farmer's market go for two dollars and fifty cents. You clean through them and get out these little, smaller green beans like this. <laughs> these right now are selling. This is two forty nine for this box, which is actually three dollars and thirty two cents a pound for these green beans because somebody went through, picked out the smaller ones, threw them in a box like this and, and set it out the door. So it's just a matter, this is the value added. Pick your own. With this approach, which often is associated with fruit farms, customers come to your farm and harvest the products directly. Benefits. You're selling recreation as well as your produce. Not only do customers like to eat ripe fruit right off the plant, they enjoy the experience of being on a farm and picking their own produce. Key considerations. You have to make sure customers don't damage your plants through improper picking. If customers find poor pickings, they probably won't be back. These crops might not sell for as much as they would with the benefit of simple value-added processing techniques. At our factory, we have groups of farmers come in from all over the United States. All right, We had a group from Delaware come down, and we were talking about what they grow. And one of the farmers there, he says, well, pumpkins, but I just can't seem to sell them. People don't want to buy them. He's on the way to the beach in Delaware. Well, then we started thinking about it. When do you buy pumpkins? Halloween? When do you go to the beach? Not Halloween, right? He's passing up the biggest market of the year. You know, starting in last of May, all the way through the 1st of September, people are driving past his pumpkin patch. And these people have lots of money in their pocket on the way to the beach. Is he selling them any sweet corn? No. Is he selling them any jars of jams or jelly? No. Is he selling them anything? No. But they all get to look at his pretty pumpkin patch. And it's like, we'll grow something besides pumpkins. He goes, that's what we do. We grow pumpkins. Farmers markets are scheduled events where farmers and other vendors come together to sell their products. Typically, you can establish a larger customer base than on an individual farm. It's a great entry-level opportunity for farmers just learning to direct market their value-added products. Farmers markets are usually located around populated areas where consumers often have more disposable income and an interest in local high-quality produce. A number of factors will affect how well you do and whether you can develop a loyal consumer base. These include promotional materials, labeled value-added products, competitive pricing, quality, service selection, and convenience. Grow a variety of specialty crops that are not available through industrial food suppliers. Consider growing products that cannot be delivered easily to restaurants from long distances. 
you should ask chefs to specify which hard-to-find specialty crops they would like to use. Plant a variety that will bring the most profit after adding value. It does not make economic sense to grow common crops without adding value. Assure reliability by producing goods only at their peak of flavor and in the sizes specified by the chefs. Ask the chef to compare your value-added product with his or her supplier's product. Do you process foods further than the restaurant's supplier? Find out how your price stacks up against what the chef is currently paying for a similar product. Discuss delivery arrangements in detail with the restaurant. If you are delivering, maintain a dependable schedule, set minimum orders, determine exactly how the buyer will pay, and maintain a schedule for payment. Market your value-added products along the delivery route in order to minimize delivery costs. Provide the restaurant with information about your farm, including its history. Also, the restaurant may want to feature your farm in its radio, television, and magazine advertisements. What if more local farmers processed, marketed, and sold value-added products rather than selling raw crops that require further processing? The results could double output on small farms, create jobs, and boost local economies. Value-added agriculture means getting more income from your farm in innovative ways. You can accomplish this by following one or more of these steps. Change the way a product is marketed. Marketing a traditional product in a different way, such as chocolate-covered apple slices. Changing the form of a product through processing, like the bloody butcher corn. Changing the way a product is packaged, like the squirrel corn. You can grow for specialty markets like organic baby potatoes in small clamshell packaging. Adding a new enterprise. Using agritainment events such as petting zoos, corn mazes, or nature walks can increase your value by establishing a niche market. By using value-added agriculture in farm practices, one can raise the quality of farm life, create natural resource conservation, and sustain the rural community.